Jackie with a fancy front door, Coach Fancy inside the Creative Coaching Group in Makers University. I come in here um, once a month and I open my deco subscription box and it's like Chop Kitchen. I don't know what I'm gonna make, but I'm gonna make something. Um, and so I pulled some elements from the box and let's get started. We are working on a work form. This came in my subscription box. I'm gonna go ahead and start by cutting up some of this mesh. Okay, and we're gonna start cutting. This is window pane mesh. And I'm cutting this roughly 22 inches long because see how you can see through it? I'm gonna need to curl it up a little bit more so you can see the true color of it. And nine. All right, and this is value mesh. I did not realize that I bought value mesh when I bought it. So we're gonna need a good long truffle or a good long strip whenever we uh, cut this as well. So about another 22 inch big, squishy, floofy truffle is what we're cutting here. I take um, the ends that have been cut and I roll them on the inside, okay? So I want one and a half to two rolls and then I'll take the rest and walk it together like so. And it makes, I actually make it up against my body and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and so the curls are up and under here, up and under like this. And it makes what looks kind of like a butterfly or an hourglass. And then I'll take them and put them straight down all the way against the base and give it a good twist, okay? And then I do the same thing for the purple. I like this because it's got a great texture to it. And I like the different textures uh, in my wreaths. I, I really like this window pane. Uh, okay, so same thing. I'm gonna take that, roll it a couple of times and then walk the rest together like so. So everything that could fray is tucked up in there, okay? and nothing's gonna prevent it from fraying, but this is gonna prevent that fray from showing, okay? And see, when we cut it that long, we've got a good, thick, squishy cruffle that takes up lots of space. Now what we're gonna do is take our burlap and go around between these two and add a nice little, um, poof in between the two. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take our mesh and um, walk it together like this and make like a little ponytail, okay? And I face this towards the inside, all right? Or let's face it this way, towards the inside. I'm gonna be trying to grab one from the bottom and from the top to twist it. Now, I'm going to be taking this and going over two twist ties and back one, okay? And let's attach it. Makes a small little poof right between the two. Okay. And this makes it nice and full for sure. Okay. Good twist going there. And there we go. Pretty good and thick. Now our sign is going to be our focal point. So let's just go ahead and figure out that, you know, we want him in the middle. Pipe cleaner. I always take these and cross them over just for added strength and then give them a little twist so they don't pull through. So let's bring those purples back out again. I need fullness and thickness. Okay, And then take our pipe cleaners and just Scoot them through the bottom. Let's find the bottom. The middle ring. There we go. And just 
bring it around that middle. Yay. Now, let's go ahead and come in here with our bow. Okay, so here is our tail. I'm gonna bring it down pretty long because I want it to kind of billow through the side. So I'm gonna need some length, okay? So I'm gonna walk this together and I'm gonna lay it back and make a uh, loop from back to front. Now eventually this, um, it, this tail needs to face forward. So I've got a little twist action going here before I lay it back so that the tail's facing forward. Now, if you lay this back and you can see the backside of your tail, not a big deal. Just take it later and twist it over and you'll be fine. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna lay it back and make a loop from back to front and then walk it together again. Now watch my hands. I am not gripping this bow within an inch of its life and hurting my little carpals. Um, no. I'm literally just putting my fingers together and holding it like this. So then look, we just open our fingers and stack it right on top and close our fingers again, okay? Now we're gonna give it a good hard twist. When I say good hard twist, I want this bad boy completely upside down and laying against this other tail, okay? Completely upside down. That's the key here to making sure that your bow lays correctly is that twist upside down before you make the next loop and stacking it right on top. It should look like a club sandwich uh, when it's all said and done. When you open your hands, you'll see all, every layer laying right on top of the next, okay? So here we go. Let's make a loop from back to front. Okay, so now I'm gonna squish it together again and lay this one right on top, okay? Let's make sure our tails are facing the correct direction. They are. Make sure our ears are the same length and we're looking good. Now, this is the base of our entire bow, okay? Everything is gonna be built on top of this. So let's go ahead and make sure that it fits in our area and our area is right here, okay? I like big bows, friends, but this is even a little big for me. So let's just take it in a little bit. Ta -da. Oh yeah, much, much better. Okay, it's looking good. Now we're gonna come across with our next one, which is this gorgeous black ribbon. Now I need that tail to match this tail's length. We're doing good. Walk it together, stick it right on top. Now we're gonna lay this back and make a loop from back to front. Our loops now will be diagonal from each other. So we're gonna lay this back, make a loop from back to front and walk it together again, okay? Looking good. I like for the next layers to um, uh, sit right about an inch to an inch and a half, an inch uh, to an inch and a half right inside this previous loop, just like so. Looking good. So now we're making this next loop diagonal. Okay. Twist it completely upside down again. Completely upside down. And it lays right against this other tail. Okay. And we're gonna make another loop from back to front. Walk it together, sit it right inside the next, or right on top of the next, okay? Check my ears are the same height. My tails are facing the same direction. We're building this bow how it's going to lay, so it's looking good. No, actually, I kinda want two rows of this. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little twist and lay it back from back to front. We're gonna make another loop. Just loop it from back to front. Walk it together, set it on top, and measure. As you can see, this one's a little bit smaller. So I'll just give it a little more love, okay? And then lay it back. A good hard twist, twist it completely upside down. Lay it back, make another loop from back to front. Walk it together, open your fingers, set it right on top, okay? Looking good. Make sure our tails are facing the same direction, our ears are the same length. We are looking good. Just lay that over the top as well. Walk it together, sit it right on top. Lay it back and it's gonna sit right between these two. And I also want this one to be just slightly smaller, okay? So to sit right inside these two. So let's have it about an inch and a half inside. There we go. A little pop. Pretty little pop of purple. Good hard twist. Another loop from back to front. Walk it together. Set it on top. Okay. Now I uh, am going to grab a zip tie and just run that around here.
we're gonna build this at a hole at, at a hole <laughs> at a diagonal. So I want this to sit right here, but there is no twist tie. I've got one here, here, and here, literally everywhere but where I want this. So I'm gonna grab a zip tie and ring it around this middle loop so it can sit right here. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and give that a little tightness, but we're not um, pushing it all the way down within an inch of its life. We're not squishing that or pulling it so far in that we're suffocating our bow. Our bow is popping out nicely. Looking good. Now we're going to take these two ribbons and I'm going to billow these kind of down the side. So I'm going to walk this together, do a nice little billow, and we're going on the outside ring so that not everything is up close to the middle. We're widening your eye line and your sight line billowing this and attaching it on the outside here. And we're going to work this one and this little free spirit can just kind of flow and dangle. We're going to take these ends and dovetail them. And we're going to end up making a nice little waterfall down here. And we're going to hit about the same places over here. So probably let's work in diagonals right here. All right, so let's also come back in here. I'm going to do a nice little bow with these two. Let me show y'all what Coach Tammy, I'm just using all kinds of coach methods. So we walk this together. Okay. You're gonna lift this up and twist the bottom so that you can see the front and then put this back down, okay? Like so. And it makes a little funky bow. Now let's grab a zip tie and attach that to the base. I'm going to attach this to the middle ring also. All right, now my favorite part, let's add the fun stuff. I just want the tops of these. They're really cute. Make sure um, to buy wired greeneries because I'm putting a little bend on this, so as I put it in, it just kind of dances out. Okay. So walk our way around here. And we're gonna be adding these at different layers so that we have different textures happening at different layers. And I'm gonna grab my handy dandy glue gun, come back um, and add some. Let's add a good drop of glue. And grab these gorgeous flowers, big flowers, and then the small buds going on of mesh. So we should probably have one here. Diagonal to that would be here. And that looks great right there. I really like this one right here. I like this one right here. And this one right here. Right here. Now, this gorgeous freesia. Trim these off. Give me a little patch right here of lots and lots of uh, mesh. So we're just going to have that just kind of dance it right on out of there. And let's do this over here as well. Look how it's just dancing out and bringing your eye down and around, which I love. Oh, wonderful. Y'all, I just love this so much. It turned out super cute. There you go. This is what I made out of my Deco Exchange subscription box. You guys, this thing never disappoints. I mean, I've still got two more signs and different ribbons to use. Oh, you guys, I just absolutely love it. Okay.